exponential challenges require exponential solutions. VTT's annual IBEX program unlocks the ingenuity and scientific creativity of VTT's own researchers to develop new concepts and early stage innovations to solve some of humanity's most pressing challenges. Each year, scientists at VTT have the opportunity to apply to the IBEX program for funding and mentoring to take their own ideas forward. Let's meet the IBEX teams of 2021. The world is facing unprecedented environmental injury from exponential increases in greenhouse gas emissions. There is simply too much CO2 in the atmosphere. The Active Carbon team is working on a solution to this by converting CO2 emissions into chemicals using a plasma reactor. There are different types of plasmas available. What we have chosen is the non-thermal plasma. So basically, we do it at room temperature. And compared to conventional technologies, we are talking about 8 to 1,000 degrees. And with non-thermal plasma, we can basically cheat the thermodynamics and bring the synthesis temperature near the room temperature. The new method offers surprising possibilities for replacing fossil-based resources. For example, as we do now, we take it as a technology to convert carbon dioxide to other chemicals or soon gas to be exact, or the carbon monoxide of that gas is the chemical building block that can be utilized to produce other materials or oils or fuels to your cars or plastics. Another way to utilize CO2 has been discovered by the anti-corrosion team. They create novel polymers with anti-corrosive properties to make concrete more sustainable and to prolong its life cycle. This type of material, they are really negative footprint solutions. So the polymers are produced from CO2. Uh, then the other aspect is uh, saving carbon by capturing the carbon. So during the lifetime of the construction, the carbon is captured and removed from the atmosphere. The multidisciplinary team is researching different ways of fighting the corrosion with these novel polymers either as a protective layer on the concrete structure or the metal reinforcement, as well as embedding corrosion inhibitors in the concrete. The origami power team is generating electricity without batteries. The team is harnessing a phenomenon called triboelectricity. This fascinating phenomenon allows the generation of electricity through the contact impact of two surfaces. So we use the origami structure to increase the surface area and therefore generate more energy. And uh, we also use sustainable raw materials. So Definitely no critical raw materials in, involved in our solution. The possibilities for this new innovation are wide-ranging since movement can be found everywhere. Even very simple case of uh, a person walking, basically, that can be the application, it can be any transportation means, so, so uh, bicycles, cars, and uh, also in industry, there are several applications where we can harness the energy. The Elias team, led by Professor Nestle Sözer, is creating a savory taste of meat without animals. The taste of meat is intrinsic to the fatty acids. Nestle's team has been successful in identifying the fat profile that is required to create a meaty taste. And it's all done by harnessing natural microorganisms. So we are using cell factories. We are using grass status microorganisms to produce the lipids. And here we are targeting similar free fatty acid profile than animal lipids, but not that much saturated, just the right amount to give the unique flavor and taste profile. Synthetic biology enables the sustainable production of novel, fully bio-based materials. Meanwhile, the need for a vast variety of material properties is increasing by the minute. However, traditional wet lab trial and error methods are not fast enough to meet this rapidly increasing demand. 
In the Ames Project, molecular biology and artificial intelligence is combined for novel materials design at the DNA level. So our ultimate goal is to bring down the development time for these new materials from years down to even days uh, by using uh, artificial intelligence and uh, machine learning. Such a, uh, uh, polymers or the proteins that we have been creating in this project could be uh, easily used in uh, different uh, uh, biomedical applications, for instance, for, for uh, implant coating, uh, for instance, for uh, injectable uh, material, for, for drug delivery. And we could even use uh, these for uh, like a technical applications in industries, like for, um, for instance, making fibers, film, um, uh, um, or adhesives from, from these sort of uh, uh, building blocks. Tackling a similar problem, but with a different approach, is Chem2Bio. Their protein prediction method utilizes a deep fake algorithm to generate new to nature enzymes for intelligent biomaterials production. We have been developing uh, an artificial intelligence method that resembles to the ones used in the deep fake to create new to nature enzymes with novel functions. These AI-driven methods can help us create fully renewable, sustainable materials built with biology, but designed by humans. This will have a large impact on the future of manufacturing, replacing petrochemical derivatives with microbially produced chemicals. The Art of Cell project is generating complex artificial tissue mimicking the human body in nanoscale components. This enables unprecedented speed in drug development trials as targeted drug molecules can be tested in nanoscale controlled environments which simulate actual conditions in the human body. Medical problems caused by stress is a major cause of serious health problems. The Smart Life team is tackling this problem by developing a miniaturized wearable sensing device for detecting stress levels in humans. And this platform enables us to monitor in real time uh, the quantity of cortisol that's in sweat, and cortisol is a biomarker for stress. So the exciting thing about this technology is that we can do this wirelessly and non-invasively in real time. As the use of wearable electronics increases, the amount of unrecyclable electronic waste accumulates. Yeah, electronic uh, components are mainly from uh, metals and semiconductors uh, and ceramics, for example. Uh, and then uh, some part of that are, are recyclable, but then they are bonded on, uh, on let's say, uh, conventional uh, substrates like, like FR4 or, or plastics, and they are glued with uh, with the epoxy-based uh, supporting glue, uh, the, the separation of those components from the, the, the substrate is very difficult and even sometimes impossible. The Cellulose eSkin team has developed a fully biodegradable nanocellulose film and nanocellulose glue for printed electronics. We have developed films which enable us to achieve very flexible film quality. Uh, we are able to uh, get a very good print on these films. They are uh, basically performing as good as plastic substrate when it comes to printing. And best of all, the precious metals used in the electronic components, the printed silver, for example, is fully recoverable. Basically, you could recover all your electronic components that are printed on the, on the film or attached to the film by basically repulping the film in water and getting your electronics component cleanly back. VTT's IBEX program celebrates the power of scientific problem solving. Follow us to find out what our researchers will be working on next.